Nice to see you again. Yes, I can see you. Actually, you know what? That was a joke. I can't. I can't really see you. Just carry on. Nothing to worry about. Anyway, in previous lessons, we talked about firsts, fourths, fifths, and eighths, which are all perfect intervals. Today, things are getting messy because we're moving on to some much less pretty intervals. Major seventh. The major seventh can be found by jumping from the first note in a major scale to up to the seventh note in a major scale. It is so close to being an octave, but the sound couldn't be more different, especially when played harmonically or at the same time. Take a listen. Now let's listen 777 more times. Try your best to maintain a tenuous grip on reality as the major seventh carries you away. I don't find any reason to use a tune to identify a major seventh because its sound is so distinctive as it is. Instead, think of it this way. When played separately, the notes of a major seventh feel incomplete. Specifically, they sound like they want to resolve upward to the octave. I call this musical gravity. Listen to the second note resolve up. Doesn't that just feel right? When played at the same time and out of context, a major seventh sounds dissonant or unpleasing. Wait a second. Why is a fifth called perfect and a seventh called major? Don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. Probably. Actually, you know what? Let's talk about it right now. This will be a gross oversimplification, but perfect intervals have a hollow, in-tune sound, and major intervals have a bright sound. Wait another second. Major intervals have a bright sound, but the major seventh sounds so strange. Well, yeah, but if you add a major seventh to a chord, it adds additional brightness. Listen to a major chord. Now listen to a major seventh added to the chord. Do you hear that sparkly brightness that the interval adds? Ultimately, this is kind of subjective, and a major seventh is actually called a major seventh because it's the seventh degree of a major scale. And at this point, I'm talking too much about things you really don't need to know yet. So... Earkster sizes. As we continue to add more intervals each week, eventually you'll get to a point where your ears get confused. If you're not sure what the interval is, just use good test-taking skills. Does it sound like the same note? If so, it's a first. Does it have a hollow, in-tune quality when played together? If so, it's a perfect fourth, fifth, or octave. Does it sound somewhat odd and dissonant? If so, it's a seventh. Does it sound like a big jump? If so, it's either a seventh or an octave. Eventually, you won't have to narrow things down as much, but this is still a good short-term strategy. Here's a quick recap. First sounds like the same note. Perfect fourth sounds like Here Comes the Bride or Hedwig's theme. Perfect fifth sounds like Star Wars or Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Major seventh sounds a bit dissonant and has an upward musical gravity. Octave is a big jump and sounds like Somewhere Over the Rainbow. As always, I'll play each interval three times before saying the answer. 
you'll hear them played separately and then together. See how many you can get right out of 10. Again, the guide is in the video description, but try to commit it to memory. Perfect fourth. Major seventh. Perfect fifth. Octave. Major seventh. First. Perfect fourth. Perfect fifth. Octave. Perfect fourth. Tip of the week. If you play an instrument, it really helps to visualize these intervals on an instrument. If you don't play an instrument, imagine the notes on a keyboard or on the, on the staff. How do you find these intervals on your instrument? Well, it depends. Guitar is super easy because you just learn the interval shape and then move it around the fretboard. Wind and brass instruments are a bit more complicated. For now, the most reliable way to find these intervals, which works on any instrument, would be to use scales. To find a fifth up from a D, go five notes up in the D major scale. D, E, F sharp, G, A. D to A is a fifth. If you don't know your scales yet, just continue to focus on the sound of these intervals. I'll make a video on scales someday, when I feel like it. See, that's the problem with music. You learn one thing, and then you have to learn something else to understand that first thing. But to learn that new thing, you have to learn something else. It's all connected, man. It's all connected. Well, what's that thing that YouTubers always say? Like and subscribe.